Welcome to r slash true off my chest, where this man lies to his colleagues about his star sign for a little prank. But when his boss gets involved in a lie, things start taking a turn for the worse, and OP gets himself into a deeper and deeper astrology hole. I've been telling people at work that I'm a Leo. I'm not. In an attempt to create a long con prank to prove to them that astrology is utter BS. But my plan is getting out of hand, and I don't think I can follow through on my big reveal. I think astrology is one of the dumbest, most unscientific things you could possibly believe. Even. Honestly, I would judge someone less for believing that the earth is flat or being a Scientologist. At least Scientology has an established law of writing created by a limited number of people, whereas apparently anyone can write horoscopes for any small town newspaper and people will still follow their local little blurb's advice. Anyway, there's a group of co-workers at my job who are way into astrology. They're always talking about signs and compatibility. It didn't work out because he's a Gemini, etc. Sometimes they talk about people at work and their personality traits based on their signs. When they asked me, I told them a fake birthday without even knowing the sign associated with it. It turns out that based on this information, I'm a Leo. They practically fell all over themselves telling me how much sense that made. You have such a creative spirit, or you're so generous, or my favorite, you're so vital. Like, what does that even mean? We're all pretty friendly with each other, so I thought it would be kind of funny to do this and then reveal to them later that I'm not a Leo at all to see how they reacted and cover for themselves to justify their ongoing going belief in magic star influences. Well, unfortunately, one of my bosses seems to believe that me being a Leo makes me uniquely suited to work on various projects and I've actually landed on some good opportunities because of it. After a presentation to clients, I was recently told that my Leo spirit was really carrying the team through such a difficult deadline. Now I'm genuinely worried that someone is going to figure out my real birthday. I work for a big company that has my real birthday in the system and there's a chance that some weird auto-generated public email or post somewhere will congratulate Congratulate the October birthdays or something. I'm basically caught up in a lie that's based on nonsense to begin with, and I'm really confused about what to do. I will probably never tell anyone at work this information, so I figured I'd tell a bunch of strangers on the internet in the hopes that I don't get found out and have some kind of weird disciplinary action taken. Imagine my boss firing me for pretending to be a Leo. That's such a Pisces thing to do. I'm kidding, but also help. Now, fortunately, a month after this, OP posted an update. Let's get straight into it. Well, thanks to everyone for offering so much sound advice and all the sympathy in the comments. There were a lot of people adamantly defending astrology too, but thankfully the sensible, reasonable people were active enough to provide me with some pretty good ideas for how to handle this. Sorry, long post incoming, but a lot has happened. It's been about a month and things are just getting weirder, unfortunately but I tried to do the right thing. A couple of weeks ago, after I worked up the courage, I sat down with the original co-workers that I gave the wrong birthday to, without my boss, who is becoming the real issue right now. I basically told them, hey, something really awkward is going on with our boss, and it kind of started because of a lie I told you guys a couple of months ago. Of course, when you openly admit to lying, people get interested, and the people at my job are really drama hungry. So of course, they immediately needed to know everything. I'm paraphrasing here, but I told them, so remember when we were all talking about birthdays and signs i kind of told you guys the wrong birthday because i'm really uncomfortable with my sign i don't think it fits me at all now this was a good thing to say apparently because they immediately laughed so much and when i told them my actual sign they said that's such a your actual sign thing to do thanks to some helpful redditors who pointed out the astrology minded can do mental gymnastics to make anything work I've got to say, OP, that is a very clever way of admitting that you gave them the wrong star sign because it's not showing that you lied. It's just showing that there was another reason, even though you are still lying right now. So I told them that I always felt like a Leo and I really liked a lot of the qualities that I read about them. So I gave a fake birthday so people would like me more, which they seemed to really understand. They were really nice about it. And I felt really guilty that I was basically lying to cover the lie, but I'm already in too deep. So I told them, hey, this is really awkward for me because our boss is giving me more opportunities because I'm a Leo. At this point, one of them says basically, hey, you know what? Maybe Leo is your rising sign. Again, this is exactly what some people in the comments predicted and offered to do my chart for me. Feeling super guilty about lying to these nice people and I guess trying to connect with them rather than mock them, I said, okay, sure. We work remote a lot of days, but we actually made plans to meet back up at the office and then stay after we 
finish work so they could do the reading. Is it called a reading? I literally don't know. It was super dumb, but I enjoyed it. We went into a conference room and we mapped out the whole chart. I had no freaking idea what was going on, but I appreciated the attention. Towards the end of the session, or whatever you call it, and mind you, this is like 8 p.m. by now, and at my job, that means freaking no one is in the building, especially with a lot of people still working remotely. Who walks past the conference room? But my freaking boss. The one who's been fawning over my performance since thinking I was a Leo. I guess she'd come in to pick up some stuff or had stayed late. Who knows? She comes in and sees the charts and my notes that I'd taken about my birth time and stuff. And since she's really into astrology, she gets all excited and goes, Oh, what's going on in here? And my co-worker, who was a freaking G, just saved my butt, explaining that I'd lied about my birthday, that I wasn't a Leo, but that I always felt like one, but doing it way better than I ever could, essentially gaining so much sympathy for me and making me seem like this tortured, misunderstood person who felt like I was trapped in the wrong star sign. It was awesome, and the vibe vibes were good. So my boss and my co-worker are going over my chart and it turns out that I'm not a Leo rising, but I am a Gemini rising. And that got them talking about how that was so me because I'm really social at work and I'm a multitasker and talkative. And they basically forgot that a couple of months ago, I was so a Leo. When I could sense the vibe was good, I even made a joke like, hey, I know that you needed a Leo helping out on those projects, but I hope there's room for a Gemini. (laughs) Ha ha. She ate it up and was like, hey, I think a Gemini is compatible with the team we have now. You obviously have already fit right in, blah, blah, blah. So the work thing is no longer a concern. But here's where it kind of gets bad again. My boss asked to take the chart home, which I didn't really think anything of, I guess, because I certainly don't care about it or want it. And then a few days go by and then it's the weekend. And then I log on to a Zoom meeting on Monday and she asked me to stay on after everyone has hung up. She goes, OP, I'm sorry if this is overstepping, but I know you're recently single. My daughter is close to your age, just finished college, and according to your charts, you'd be so compatible. So I'd love it if you would ask her out sometime. She kept saying, no pressure, but if you know this woman, she obviously was pressuring me and she's clearly too invested in her employees' personal lives. Honestly, I was so dumbfounded when she brought it up that I was basically speechless. So that was about a week ago. And since then, she's had her daughter follow and DM me on Instagram and email me and start basically flirting with me. It's all pretty casual conversation, but she's clearly prepped her with things like, you'd be perfect for him. I've kind of stalled getting back to her because honestly, I think this is really inappropriate. And the last thing I want to do is become more involved in my boss's life and certainly not with someone she's related to. This all feels pretty inappropriate, but I also feel worried about hurting feelings. So yeah, this is awkward. And I'd argue it's perhaps worse than when we started. Help. Now, if I was boring, I would probably say something along the lines of, well, that's why you shouldn't lie in the first place. But I'm not. So instead, there's only one solution. Unfortunately, my friend, you are now locked in and you need to marry the boss's daughter. That's all you can do. You have to do it. You've got yourself into this mess. You have to follow through now. Ultimately, if you don't now start a family with this woman and stay with her for the rest of your life, then you are a disgrace. Um, Yeah, that's why you don't lie, kids. That is why you don't lie. And for those of you that might want to know my star sign, it's cancer. So get down in the comments and let me know. Does that make sense or not? And I'm definitely not lying about that trying to catch people out we'll never know let's carry on my husband is going to be either pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised when he gets home i'm not the best at keeping secrets so it's killing me inside and i wanted to let it out somewhere so here i am yesterday i overheard my husband talking to his friend over the phone about how much he missed his mother's homemade meals we're both indian first gen americans since we got married a little over a year ago and moved in together we've mainly been cooking easy to make meals we split the cooking 50 50 and keep our meals as healthy as possible while trying out different different stuff but barely dipped our toes in our own culture's cuisine there aren't any indian grocery stores near us so it's hard to find certain key ingredients but we figured it was no big deal and gave up on the idea i had no problem with it but i didn't know how much he was craving my mother-in-law's food until yesterday both of our families live in another state so it's just us two so i decided to call up my mother-in-law last night to ask her for the recipe of my husband's favorite dish once i wrote down everything i needed i tried looking for the nearest indian grocery store two hours away yikes however i was in too deep to go back at that point so i woke up at 5 a.m today about six hours before we normally wake up on the weekends and drove to the store to get everything i needed i made sure to buy in bulk so we could continue to cook more of our favorite meals for a while once i got back at around 10 30 i made sure to check if he was still asleep before i brought the grocery bags in and thankfully he was so i hid the bags in an empty kitchen cabinet 
and acted as naturally as I could. Obviously, I needed him out of the house, so I called up one of his close friends to ask if he could hang with him for a few hours, which he was glad to do. So now I'm home alone. I'm currently working on the recipe my mother-in-law gave me, and I've been struggling a bit, but I'm trying my best. I really hope he loves it, or at least appreciates my efforts in the event that it doesn't turn out that great. I'm kind of nervous though. If this gets any attention, I'll post an update. And thousands of upvotes later, it certainly did get attention. So here is that update from just a few hours later the same day. I'd finished cooking and setting the table a mere 10 minutes before he got home. So I started cleaning up the kitchen as I waited. I had the pleasure of seeing his reaction as soon as he walked in since there's a perfect view of the front door from the kitchen. He was instantly taken aback because the aroma of most Indian food is very much distinct. His eyes shot back and forth between me and the food for a few seconds before he asked what was going on. He's usually very calm and collected, so it was endearing seeing his emotions written all over his face. He reluctantly inched towards the food, and once the realization hit him that it was his mother's recipe, he wore an expression that I hadn't seen before. His voice cracked, and it turned into a sob when he thanked me and embraced me in a bone-crushing hug. I'm still sore from it. He hasn't cried in front of me in months, so I was just as much, if not more, taken aback than he was. I was supposed to render him speechless, and there I was at a loss for words. I didn't expect him to react that way, in all honesty, and I found myself tearing up too. He'd expressed that no one had ever gone out of their way to do something this thoughtful for him, and it made my heart all mushy. Anyway, after we both calmed down and sat down to eat, he could tell I was anxious about him trying it. So he reassured me that nothing could possibly ruin the night unless he gets food poisoning. But even then, he'd vomit his brains out with a smile on his face, he said. His jokes always lighten up the mood, so I was grateful for that. And as it turned out, he enjoyed it. Albeit, my cooking could never compare to my mother-in-law's. He called her up and expressed how happy he was that he got a taste of home after so long. He's been in such a good mood since then, and it really puts a smile on my face. I've never really gone out of my way to do something this extreme for anyone before, but I didn't even give it a second thought. Nor did I for a second regret the four-hour drive, even with these gas prices right now. I'm just happy that he loved the dish, and as many of you said, even if it hadn't turned out well, he still would have felt the same. I try my best to do nice things for him because he makes me the happiest wife ever. Also, for those curious as to what I made, it was Halim and Naan. He grew up eating it pretty often and my mother-in-law's food is to die for. I wish I'd taken a picture, but my phone had died by the time I was done cooking, probably because I kept hopping on here. And my husband was too eager to dive in to even think of taking a picture of the food. To me, that just made the moment even more special. Wow, there we go. What an incredibly wholesome story. That is one of the things that I love about r slash true off my chest. If you've never come across it before, yes, I would say the majority of things are inherently negative because you're admitting something anonymously that you wouldn't say in real life. But then also there are stories like this, which is just fantastic and, you know, uplifting. And you can sense the apprehension in OP's voice in the first post. But look, amazing story, amazing gesture, by the way. And uh, yeah, just a lot it went well. See, this comment on screen right now is exactly what I mean. A kind and helpful mother-in-law, a supportive and grateful boyfriend this can't be reddit seriously though so cute that's the thing the majority of stuff on reddit let's be honest with each other is quite negative especially when it comes to familial stuff but this story was fantastic and if you want to see more from r slash true off my chest drop a like on the episode and comment down below that's the way of letting me know